<laughs> hey, use mine. Six months ago, I went inside with uh, Dave, Bob, we was in the prayer room together. Yes, we were. We were. We prayed and prayed. Like and like a new shirt. Huh? Looks like a new shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's new to me after wearing tan for a long time. You look good. Hey, it's good to be here, y'all. It's good to see y'all. It's good to see you. I was sitting here thinking, wow. Scotty. You look great. Yo, Chappy, uh, say hello when you go back. I talked to him the other day. I will. John, love the accent. <laughs> Good. New guys, I don't know you, but I look forward to getting to meet you in the near future. Glad my brother's back there, Bernard, and Jerome, Dale, my good, and a good friend, John Tabor. He's from McCormick. He's followed me all the way up here to Spartanburg. He's part of the McCormick tribal community. Thank you for coming. And uh, just glad to be here to have an opportunity to share with you guys just you know what God has done and is doing. I went through Kairos number six at McCormick Correction back in 1996, September 25th through 28th, I think it was. I was already a Christian. I had become a Christian about four months earlier. I was in love with the Lord. And God had pulled me out of a, a sewer pit and it started doing something in my life. Got invited to sign up for Kairos by a young man that was just familiar with me coming to know the Lord. And, uh, they kept the secret in. I mean, it was more secret. They had the doors, you know, covered up so you could see in the school building where they were having it. Nobody would tell you about what to expect. And some people thought, this is a cult. <laughs> no, it's not a cult, man. But what is it, you know? And you're going to eat a lot of cookies. What's got to be about more than just cookies? <laughs> and so they just kind of, you know, just left you hanging and left you hanging. But when I got there, I was like blown away. And Jeremy mentioned Jeremiah Craddock, who's still at Tiger River and beginning out next year. He and I were in that together. And if you took a look at our picture, you would see some of the goofiest grins you ever saw in your life. <laughs> I was just cheesing, big cheeses on my face. Because I was enjoying the presence of the Lord and the love that was being shown and demonstrated by his people as they served us. Here we are, wards of the state, cast off, mm. thrown aside, and really feeling like we didn't matter. And you got people from the outside, successful businessmen and women that are coming in to serve us. It was mind blowing. You mean to tell me you're going to bring me some more tea and some more cookies to the point where I got to say no more? Amen. You know, you mean to tell me they're going to cook out there at wherever they were, uh, whatever ch uh, church they were uh, staged at and bring in some hot meals that we did not get? Hot rolls, fresh vegetables, oh my God, chicken galore. Hmm. You mean I don't have to wrap it up in some plastic and try to sneak it back to the door? <laughs> I can eat all I want here? It was mind-blowing to think that somebody loved us enough to come and do that for us. It didn't cost me anything. You weren't asking anything for me, from me. Just had an opportunity to receive. And that love was mind-blowing. I see men break. Because they just never had anybody do that to them before. Most of us growing up in dysfunctional homes, addicts to something, whether it was drugs and alcohol or pornography or rage or whatever it were. But God was doing something through you. And he touched my life in that. And that, all that did was give me a booster shot. I mean, it lifted me up. I came out of Cairo. So I was running around the yard just, just started raving mad for the Lord Jesus. Amen. Because he had touched mm -hmm. me. But I want to go back to what it was about the Kairos weekend that really touched me. It was the service. In essence, that Kairos team of number six washed our feet. They washed our feet. We went up on a mountaintop retreat here. The church, we went, um, when was that? Was August. That? It was in August, right. And uh, they had a push, foot washing up there. And there's something humbling about stooping to wash another's feet. And there's something humbling about when you go on the inside, you that make yourself of no reputation. Mm. You go on the inside to some men that society has said, you know what, we're going to lock you away. You're not fit to live in society. And you're going in and you're making yourself of no reputation. You're humbling yourself and you're serving these guys. You're going to leave an indelible impression. I'm, in, I'm proof of it. Don Connard back there is proof of it. Jerome Mitchell is proof of it. Dale is proof of it. That this thing has an impact. Not only on the guys getting out, 
but the guys that are still there. And some of them will not leave except in a box. But you can have an impact. I remember reading in the Kairos Manual, and they talked about how they wanted the hardest of the hard. Didn't want to go get all the church guys and go to church all the, thing, all the time. You want the guys, the leaders on the yard, the yes. roughnecks. Get a hold of them. Let them get touched by Jesus, and then they'll go back, and they'll change the dorm that they live in. They'll go back and touch the lives of those guys that they hang out with every day. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. And it's because you serve others. Serve. I read the scripture this morning in John chapter 13. Where Jesus uh, washed the feet of his disciples, and Peter said, Lord, what are you doing? He said, you don't know what I'm doing now, but you'll understand later. He said, Lord, you can't wash my feet. He said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. Well, don't stop with the feet, Lord. Hands and knees. You might as well just bathe me. Give of yourself completely to your work. Remember this. Please hear me this here. Guys on the inside, because they're so broken, their antenna is way up. Way up. So if you feel like you're better than them, they detect your need. And the walls go up and they distance themselves from you. But if you go in just being transparent, not not dis, not tearing yourself down, but if you just go in being transparent, saying, This is who I am. I'm a man just like you, with struggles, with challenges, with issues. But guess what? God is helping me, and as He enables me. I'm going to help you. Guys will receive. Those little forts and castles that they built to protect themselves, that's because that's what they're doing. Those walls will begin to come down. And then when those agape ladders hit Saturday afternoon, the river's going to flow. Amen. It's going to flow. It's going to flow because it flowed for me. Hey, y'all, excuse me. I got to go back to work. Like, okay. You know, John, good to see you, John, bud. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> He's show. <laughs> y'all love old brother Don Delaw. Y'all hadn't seen him in a while. Hey, man, man. <laughs> See, that's a product of what you guys have been doing. That's a product right there. That's proof. 